Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. As always, likes, comments, and subscribes are appreciated as they do help with the algorithm. And yeah, let's jump right into it. At the moment, Bitcoin and Ethereum collectively are trending sideways. Many other altcoins have found the momentum to continue moving upward, but for some reason, it appears as if Bitcoin is having a bit of an issue, not only getting past $39,500, but also even thinking of passing by $40,000, US dollars, which appears to be the sweet spot for what a lot of people are waiting for. However, when I say optimism in the news, that is an exact understatement. There is a lot of news about where Bitcoin is getting ready to go, what Bitcoin is doing, how Bitcoin's price is being affected by other world events that are currently taking place, especially at the time of me making this video. The general consensus appears to be that Bitcoin is getting ready to move above $40,000. The idea being that Bitcoin has already consolidated, Bitcoin has already fallen, Bitcoin has moved down as low as it is going to go. It's somewhere in one of these articles. I'm not sure if we're going to, you know, get to the exact point of where it is, but a lot of people were saying that they believed that Bitcoin's lowest point was going to be $28,000. And as we kind of nicked it, nipped it, whatever word you want to use to mean like graze slightly against it as we were near the $30,000 range and have since then moved back up. Therefore, it looks like Bitcoin is going to continue on its movement upward. As one might have expected, a lot of analysts are now in the news talking about exactly where we are and exactly what Bitcoin is looking like. It says Bitcoin analyst and co-founder of software firm Hypersheet, his name is Willie Wu, believes that on-chain metrics show that Bitcoin is not in a bear market despite observing peak fear levels. Speaking on the What Bitcoin Did podcast hosted by Peter McCormick on the 30th of January, Wu cited key metrics, such as a strong number of long-term holders, wallets holding for five months or longer. A growing rate of accumulation suggests that the market has not flipped the switch to bear territory. A lot of times, one of the common misconceptions in the cryptocurrency space is that if Bitcoin's price is falling, therefore it is in a bear market. Bear markets include an entire range is about five or six different metrics. It's if people who are mining Bitcoin have begun to turn off their machines because they believe or have indications that in the future the price will continue to go down. Therefore, it is not monetarily worth it for them to have their computers plugged in. This is, this is why when I say multiple times, when we see that the actual mining metrics for Bitcoin have only continued to go up, this is great news because they're willing to, at a lower price, plug in their machines and create more Bitcoin despite where the current price levels are because they're trying to accumulate as much as they can in anticipation for a movement upward. It has to do with the amount of people who are holding Bitcoin. We can see quite clearly not who the wallets belong to in, in most cases, but the amount of Bitcoin that they're holding inside of said wallets. Are the wallets decreasing in the amount of Bitcoin that they have or are they increasing the amount of accumulation that they've been having before in the past? There's, I mean, tons and tons of different metrics. When all these things begin to slide down, when people are unplugging their machines, when people are selling off their Bitcoin, when no one is mining it, when the amount of daily transactions on Bitcoin has fallen below a certain level, i.e. this is why we had news before. Uh, hey, there's trillions of dollars being transacted on Bitcoin every single month. That's an amazing metric that despite the price actually falling down, there's still a trillion dollars flowing through the network. Normally, in the past, what we would see is as prices would fall and the other metrics would fall, people would find Bitcoin not as exciting to trade and or move back and forth and therefore would stop using it. When all these metrics begin to fall, that's when we enter a bear market. He said, structurally on chain, it's not a bear market setup, even though I would say we're at peak fear, definitely. No doubt about it, people are really scared, which is typically an opportunity to buy. Uh, the, the fear metric is also something uh, that a lot of investors use to kind of swap between the two. Uh, normally meaning if uh, everyday average investors who have just gotten into the market, you can see the metric of how many of them have recently entered the market over the last six months by the newly created wallets. 
If they have begun to capitulate and sell off their positions rapidly because they don't see any, they don't see any immediate type of movement up in the market, this is when we normally, every single time, historically, have seen that there's always whales in the background who are buying up tons of Bitcoin. Here's the actual uh, chart for it right here. It says in the short term, Wu noted, you don't often get this kind of pullback without it re relief bouncing. And that a potential capitulation down to $20,000 doesn't appear feasible as it would replicate the 2018 crash into a bear market in the space of just three months as opposed to a year. A lot of people, as well, like I said, are discussing uh, Bitcoin's price, where Bitcoin's going. And I, I think it's quite, I want to say the word telling, uh, when all the very rich people don't seem to worried. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Analysts at Morgan Stanley have, in a research note titled State of the Bear Market, downplayed Bitcoin's 50% correction from its all-time high seen in November, as the figures show the drop was within historical norms. According to Coindesk, the bank's head of cryptocurrency research, Sheena Shah, pointed out that estimating the fair value of cryptocurrencies is difficult because they trade speculatively, and were supported by the large availability of U.S. dollars and central bank liquidity. In the note, the analyst wrote that if the price of Bitcoin drops below $28,000, which is that number that we keep hearing over and over that we bounced off of, the market may expect further weakness. On the upside, the $45,000 mark is the price to watch because it would suggest the current downtrend has turned around. This is why we have so much attention now about Bitcoin passing by $40,000. The original number that we uh, received a couple of days ago was Bitcoin passing by $42,000. I guess 45000 is obviously not only a higher number, but also a stronger metric to see that there's an additional $3,000 worth of optimism floating around through the market. As far as Bitcoin currently not passing by $40,000, the only thing that I could find that made any type of sense because this continues happening over and over and over and over and over and over. I had about five more overs, but I decided to stop it. The SEC has delayed its decision on a proposal for a Bitcoin ETF from Bitwise Asset Management, according to a filing from the regulator. The US SEC has uh, filing postpones the approval, which aims to be listed on the ICE's New York Stock Exchange, ARCA Exchange in the near future. The, once again, I, I don't like going over this news because I think it's completely nonsensical. However, the SEC has once again rejected another filing for a Bitcoin ETF within the United States. Uh, at this point, I do not remember explicitly because I, I think the news is who cares. Uh, I do not think that there is any other company who has actively openly at the moment filed with the US SEC to launch a Bitcoin ETF. Anyone who actually tries to list a Bitcoin ETF at this point, I believe is actively trying to manipulate the market. They know for certain that no ETF proposal that they try to put through is going to be approved by the SEC. What always happens and has happened for the last six to seven years, every single time that a proposal has been put forth and then rejected by the SEC, Bitcoin's price has fallen down. So as it stands right now, I would assume that the, the half a percent drop that we are currently seeing in Bitcoin's price uh, from the optimism that we've had for the last two days in the market is probably due to the ETF uh, rejection because this keeps happening over and over. This is not the first time. This is about the 38th time over the last six years that this has happened. And therefore, you kind of get the idea. I'm, I'm waiting for another company to try and list an ETF and, you know, because I believe market manipulation is quite apparent in many corners of the market right now. And then on top of that, to finish off the price news, it says Bitcoin inflows suggest institutional investors are moving back into the market. We have seen the charts that the amount of new people who got into the market or even people who have been in the market for a while have sold off a large number of their positions. A large number of these people have either not re-entered the market or are trying to rebuy the coins that they sold off before. And a lot of these coins have been bought up by whales. At the same exact time, we also see accumulation numbers continuing to skyrocket despite where the price currently is. 
And now we're also seeing that the wallets that previously were held by institutions and or are currently still held by institutions are now buying up more Bitcoin as well. All of this uh, rolling into one gigantic uh, Bitcoin's price should not be as low as it currently is. Yeah, that's all the price news, um, at least at the moment. Um, yeah, let's move on. Next up, in probably one of the most popular, unpopular, popular news stories of the day. On Monday, former Goldman Sachs executive Raul Powell explained why he currently holds very little Bitcoin, even though back in October of 2020, he was so bullish that he claimed Bitcoin is eating the world. Prior to founding Macroeconomics, an investment strategy research service global macro investor in 2005, Powell, I don't care what he did over the last 11 years, that's cool. In the 2020 April issue of the GMI newsletter, Powell explained why he believes that Bitcoin which he called the future, could one day have a $10 trillion valuation. In that issue, Powell said that the idea of a $10 trillion valuation for Bitcoin is not so crazy. After all, it isn't just a currency or even a store of value. It is an entire trusted, verified, secure financial and accounting system of digital value that can never be created outside of the cryptographic algorithm. It is nothing short of the future of our entire medium of exchange system and of money itself and the platform on which it operates. Uh, the person who wrote this article, they I mean, I assume as well that they were also a little bit peeved because the article is quite long where they basically find every single tweet where he was talking about Bitcoin in a positive manner and what he thought about it and where he thought Bitcoin was going to be going and how high Bitcoin was going to be going and exactly what Bitcoin was going to be doing over the next couple of years. The Normally, most articles are not this long and this one actually continues it talks about him being on podcasts and the positive things that he had to say about bitcoin and exactly where he thought it was going on the 19th of january this year after getting into an argument with a bitcoin maximalist on twitter he shocked and angered i don't know why anyone was angry angered quite a few people in the crypto community by claiming that he only owns one bitcoin here's the tweet right here from said person and i pretty sure i cannot say either one of those words but it's two very mean words in Raul's direction. Uh, so basically, um, he said, and that is your issue. I don't share your philosophy, so you attack me. Really? This is why I only hold one Bitcoin. He said the community has lost sight of inclusion, and you, sir, are helping reduce the network effect by excluding people who don't share your view from the network. So the major news of the day is someone who really apparently said before that they believe that Bitcoin was the future, now only hold apparently, allegedly, so they say, just one Bitcoin. Uh, if you are relatively new to the cryptocurrency space, I'm sure you may have noticed uh, rumblings within the cryptocurrency community. If someone openly states that they like Bitcoin, everyone else rushes to them and tells them exactly how terrible they are because Bitcoin is not the future. If someone says they love Ethereum, everyone from the Bitcoin side and everyone from the other altcoin side says that you're absolutely ridiculous. I don't understand what you're doing. Solana is the future. Cardano is the future. EOS is the future. Tron is the future, et cetera, et cetera. If someone comes out and says, hey, I think XRP is great. Every single person from every other coin, especially people who are uh, Bitcoin maximalists, will then laugh at said person. Uh, the idea of any type of active inclusion within the cryptocurrency space does not exist because people have made the entire community this way. They've made sure, and I'm sure a lot of, I, I, I can feel the anger boiling from a lot of you uh, watching this right now. It's because for some reason, protocols that people did not create themselves, that they own a portion of through actually having invested in these coins, they believe so strongly in these things as far as them either taking over the world, being the main coin, usurping Bitcoin, whatever uh, thing that they have going on in their head. So as one might have imagined, uh, many people began to uh, scream at and attack Raul Powell on his Twitter page because he said that he only owns one Bitcoin. And then he came out and said, well, the reason why I only own one Bitcoin is that exact reason. Uh, a lot of people are angry because... Uh, they don't own his coins. I'm not really sure why anyone would actually be angry at this point. Uh, you are not Raul Powell. You do not own his money. He is not your money. You are not him. Why are you so invested in this man's life who you have never met, who you are never going to meet? 
If you believe so strongly in, in the Bitcoin world network market, you should have written on his Twitter, I'm sad to hear that. I do believe in Bitcoin's philosophy. I think Bitcoin could be a very great coin. It's sad to see you go from the market, but that just leaves more opportunity for other people who believe in the market. No, of course that didn't happen. Tons of people were attacking him for a very long time. Uh, even the uh, person from, um, what do you call it? Uh, he didn't attack him, but the guy from the uh, What Bitcoin Did podcast also was like quite shocked and being like, you only own one Bitcoin? Uh, he eventually later says that the reason why he only actually has uh, one Bitcoin is because he believes that the altcoins, so he said, are poised uh, to completely outperform Bitcoin, which always actually ends up happening. So he's not wrong there and therefore has reduced his supply of Bitcoin dramatically because uh, he believes that Ethereum and other coins are going to 40x random number, while Bitcoin may only 1, 2, or 3x around the same exact time. So yeah, this is very popular news. Um, I wished for a very long time that there was any type of inclusion or community within the cryptocurrency community, I had always assumed that I own crypto, you own crypto, they may be different cryptocurrencies, but we can still agree that cryptocurrencies are the future. But that's not how it works. Uh, I, I think people make sure that they are divisive because I think it makes them feel stronger in the cryptocurrency space, which is also a, a really sad thing. I've had a lot of friends, you might remember this from 2017, in 2018 and 2019, a lot of my friends who actually were in the cryptocurrency space left because anytime that they wrote a, a message on Twitter or wrote something, hey, I think this coin is pretty cool, they would get hundreds of responses calling them an idiot, calling them a loser. Why aren't you into this coin? And it's like, yeah, that's really how you get people to stay into the community. So I don't blame him. I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if 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 Ethereum users have opened him with, with welcome arms because... Uh, yeah, like, 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 like I said, if you've been in the cryptocurrency space for more than a year and have infiltrated uh, crypto Twitter or uh, crypto Reddit, which is also uh, full of sludge, uh, you know exactly what's going on. So yeah, this was an, uh, I mean, when I talk about popular news, this was it. So yeah, uh, we don't own his money. He owes us nothing. We will never meet this man. And even if we do, who cares? We have our own lives to think about. So stop worrying about, like this was, remember when um, Vitalik Buterin announced years ago that at some point he was going to step away from the Ethereum project. People lost their minds. Why would you do that? How, how could you even think of doing that? You're a terrible person. He said, the idea is Bitcoin doesn't have a leader. Bitcoin itself doesn't make any promises. It's simply just Bitcoin. We know that Bitcoin is slow. We know that Bitcoin is below average. It's just Bitcoin. He said he wants Ethereum to do the exact same thing. He doesn't want people to continuously ask him over and over what's next for Ethereum. He wants Ethereum to simply exist, and it cannot do that as long as he's, him and Joseph Lubin are the heads of the project. But people also completely... You, you, you can't have proper decentralization when you have a CEO or a leader of the board, that's not how decentralization works. You can't have everything happening in one building. It has to happen around the world seamlessly by itself. Anyway, that's the, I only have one tab open because this one did a very good job of, I mean, really going through the entire news story. Once again, move on with your life. I, I promise you, it's not as bad as you actually think it is because in about five days, you're going to even forget that this guy even said this. All righty, let's move on. So while he was selling, of course, somebody else was buying. MicroStrategy has once again bought the dip. This time, the business intelligence firm added another 660 Bitcoin to its corporate treasury. Per the forms filed with the US SEC on Tuesday, MicroStrategy, it's weird that you have to file with the US SEC to buy Bitcoin. MicroStrategy scooped up 660 Bitcoin between the 30th of December and the 31st of January. The company spent, an, it says, an eye-watering $25 million. That's not eye-watering. 
to purchase the coins at an average price of $37,000 per coin. MicroStrategy has purchased, I mean, $184 million worth of coins at, at, at one other point. Not that $25 million isn't a significant amount of life-changing money, but when you talk about a, a, a company who owns billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, $25 million is, I mean, drop in the bucket. As of the 31st of January... MicroStrategy holds a total of 20, well, no, even more than that, 125,051 Bitcoin on its balance sheet, valued at $4.8 billion. See, there's a big difference. The firm's average purchase price stands at $30,000 per coin, including fees and expenses. This is, of course, uh, not only popular news, but also completely unsurprising news because this happens every single day time. We, we've gone over this before. I told you a couple of days ago, not that I'm psychic. Yum, 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 yum. Nope. It's more just basic logic. Every single time, every single time that the market has dropped, it's always MicroStrategy, uh, Kathy Woods, uh, and there's a, two, two other companies, not Grayscale, but there's two other ones who also keep popping up who are also buying tons of Bitcoin every time that the market dips. This is why it's so significant because when you have new people in the market who I would have assumed would stay in the market because of the prospect of the future gains that are possible in this market, my arms can't stretch any further, they end up leaving the market. And then what ends up happening is the coins that they sold off end up getting scooped up by, once again, the richest people on the planet. Keeping in mind, this is a company who is actively, openly announcing that they are purchasing these coins. Imagine the other 500 companies around the world who don't have to do that and are still scooping up tons of Bitcoin. So yeah, of course this happened. None of you should be surprised. It happens all the time. Uh, I think you will be more surprised uh, to figure out at some point in the future exactly how many other companies have also been doing the exact same buying probably on a daily basis and that there are probably no Bitcoin left out there for anyone left to buy. But you know. That's for like a couple of years from now. Anyway, that's the micro strategy news. And yeah, let's move on. Also in, um, yeah, two small cap altcoins built on top of Solana are enjoying a boost after getting a surprise listing from Coinbase. The top crypto exchange in the United States suddenly announced it would be accepting inbound transfers of Solana-based projects Bone, Bone, Bone Fida? Bonfita. It looks like Bonafide, but that does not say Bonafide. It is B-O-N-F-I-D-A, Bonfita. And Orca. Bonfita is built on top of the Solana and built on top of Solana and Solana-based Serum. It aims to be an all-in-one exchange platform for data-driven ex traders. Its platform focuses on metrics like exchange statistics, cryptocurrency reviewing, and scoring crypto trends, and more. Wow. Um, so there's a lot of news now, and there was an article a day or two ago. I don't expect much of it. However, a lot of people are uh, wondering why, just logic, just use your brain. A lot of people are wondering why Coinbase is now adding not only Solana, but also coins that are built on top of Solana. For those of you who weren't here years ago, we had news or indications that apparently some of the higher ups in Coinbase, uh, while they think Bitcoin's cool, uh, they also really love Ethereum and think that Ethereum is going to be the main coin of the future, like unequivocally, like they believe this to be so. So the idea of listing Solana came as a big question mark to a lot of people because they're like, wait, but Solana is like the opposite of Ethereum. Why would you be listing that on your platform? And now that they're adding Solana-based coins, people are like, I don't get it. Does Coinbase now believe in Solana? I don't know if people don't know what a business is. So like a couple of years ago, maybe like five years ago, somebody came up with the idea of like putting money into a, a company and then like buying stuff with it. And then this is what we call a cryptocurrency exchange. On this cryptocurrency exchange, exchange, exchange um, owners have found that um, you make a lot more money listing 20 coins than you do just one, regardless of if you believe in said coin or not. That was super sarcastic. Don't know if you got it. Not trying to be mean, but I mean, what is going on in this world where people don't understand that a company would list other coins 
because first of all, Solana just based off of hype is probably going to continue going up in price. And guess who also makes money from that as well? Coinbase. As people are buying, as people are selling, as people are trading said coin, I, I don't know what's happening. I, I, I feel like we're just kind of walking into a wall constantly because a lot of people don't really understand how this market works at all. Uh, when I say and have said before, uh, please do your own research, I mean like things like that. Like, why would a business want to make more money? You know, just really... Anyway, so yeah, um, Coinbase has listed multiple coins from Solana, I think, at this point, even just on Coinbase Pro. I assume they're going to be adding more, especially if Solana ends up going into the top seven, top five, top four coins out there in the cryptocurrency space. But uh, for some reason, news like this keeps shocking people, and I'm not really sure why. All righty. Let's move on. Also in the news, on-chain data shows that the number of Bitcoin wallets with a non-zero balance has set a new all-time high above 40 million. As per the latest weekly report from Glassnode, the number of Bitcoin wallets that have Bitcoin in them has now reached a new all-time high of 40.16 million. The number of wallets with a non-zero balance is an indicator that looks at each address on the chain and tells us how many of them are currently holding some amount of Bitcoin, as one would assume because it says non-zero, so I assume it's higher than zero. When the value of this metric goes down, it means investors have started to purge their wallets as they pull out of the market. This trend may be seen following a crash in the price of crypto. On the other hand, when the indicator moves up, it implies more investors are entering the market as they are filling up fresh wallets with some amount. So it has been estimated for a long amount of time that the amount of people who are into the Bitcoin space is around roughly 150 to 100 million people. And I guess the actual number of wallets out there that now have a larger amount than zero is now uh, over 40 million. Do I have an actual, is this the chart for it right here? Yes, here's the actual chart right here. Uh, why is this chart significant? Because it shows that it's, I mean, except for the 2017 peak and then fall, uh, it's consistently been going up. Even during all of the crashes that we've been having, isn't that super weird that all the news we've been going over for the last two years has been true? Institutions have been buying an enormous amount of Bitcoin nonstop. Other people keep selling, but other people keep buying even more than they've already sold. So anyway, yeah, uh, this was the beginning of 2020. You can see the rapid movement upward, regardless of where the black line, the price might actually be people are still accumulating. Very odd. I mean, why would they be accumulating Bitcoin? It's almost like they are expecting it to go higher. No, they wouldn't be expecting that. That just sounds completely ridiculous. Anyway, that's a, is, is this supposed to be a bull? I have no idea what this animal is. It looks like a Pokemon, but it also looks like, I don't think anyone out there actually plays um, Runeterra, but this looks like an Elnook. I'm going to stop talking now. All right, that's the animal with horns uh, Bitcoin bullish signal. Weird how we keep getting nonstop bullish signals and all the institutions are like, no, it's fine. Let's just keep buying Bitcoin. All righty. Let's move on. And to finish things off, large Cardano token holders have more than doubled their holdings in the cryptocurrency in just 10 days after its price dropped more than 30%. To available, to available data shows, why not? According to, to cryptocurrency analytics firm Santiment, Cardano addresses holding between 10,000 and 1 million ADA have increased their holdings by 113% over the last two weeks, accumulating a total of $53 million in the same period. Here's the chart for it right here. Cardano has now joined the, the ranks of... Uh, behind the scenes, whales are accumulating tons of cryptocurrency news. We've had it for as long as I can remember for Bitcoin. It happens basically every single day that either a major company is buying Bitcoin or we see external addresses accumulating huge amounts of Bitcoin. We've had this news as well for the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges, which continues to drop. We've had this news for Ethereum, 
The amount of Ethereum on cryptocurrency exchanges continues to drop. Behind the scenes, we know that whales are also buying up tons of Ethereum in anticipation of Ethereum 2.0. And also now trickling into the news is uh, information about Cardano also having uh, people buying tons of it over the course of, uh, I mean, not even just a two-week period. We keep getting this around once a week, once every 10 days or so. That's something like this is happening in the uh, background. I'm going to assume it is because of a lot of people still believe that we are going to hit that $10 Cardano price. That, you know, it's basically inevitable that at some point we will have a $10 Cardano. That um, the decentralized exchanges, two of them that they have on the network, will continue to grow, gain more people, have tons of liquidity inside of them, more locked up coins. That the NFT space will continue to grow, therefore NFTs on top of Cardano. You get the idea. So um, is this surprising? Absolutely not. It's one of the most popular blockchains in the, like, literally in the entire world. I was going to say universe, but that, I don't know what other planets have. Anyway, that's the uh, rich people are continuing to buy tons of car dot no news because it just makes logical sense. Yeah. Let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Professor Wally from Gunbot University. How's life, Austin? Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move on. Chris Hakim Wilkins, Empire Queen, Stake It with Valor, FUD, Wiser, Mortified, Roman Geba, Bitcoin, Ben Arachno, Dave, Tony, Ambroski, The Dealers, Den, Red Plump, Tomato, Umnu, Wish Nikki, The Letter M, Not Brain, Captain Something in the Z-Way Lay, Crypto, Black Sheep, AJ Cut 5, Speedy 655, and Carlos Was Like, Mobarazzi, Jojo Shasho, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolet, Lauren De Silva, Quarterbitty, Bare Bones Mining, Troy, All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Paternoster, Conan, Don't Skip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik Banana, Auspicious Agile, and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Moon Man High, XRP, Martin Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, Abibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grace, Mohamed Maroney, Mass Adventures in Thailand, Jaren Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World Bank, Raw Network, Crypto Artist, Cody 3D, Damien, Set Sooner, Rich Richard, Third, Landy, Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mann, Gialavori, Jim Gardner, Jimmy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller, Hitch Test, Everyday, and Kyle Skip, Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Body Big, Butterface, Anytime Finance, Mars, Gonna Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to all the new Patreon members. Hello out there. I do see you every single day. Thank you very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who left a like, who left a comment, who is still here watching me. If you are still here watching, type in... Uh, <laughs> I was going to make a long sentence, but like <laughs> I was going to I was gonna ask you to write, stop worrying about Raul Pal, worry about your own money. But that seems a bit excessive. Uh, write the number one, two, three, four, five. If you are still here watching, I do appreciate those comments as well. At the moment, Bitcoin is at thirty-eight thousand four hundred and forty-six dollars. It is down by one point one four percent. You see these movements. This is absolutely incredible that this continues to happen all the time for Bitcoin. You can see the actual struggle taking place. The market looking to move up and immediately wails behind the scenes, making sure that it does not pass by a certain. Point, because this is the point where I assume tons of other people around the world are waiting for this price to be broken, and therefore the market will resume skyrocketing pumping as it once was before. Solana is currently up by 2.3%. It is currently coin number six. Look at that. Just makes a lot of sense. Polkadot is up by 2.8%. Avalanche is up by 1.2% at the same exact time. Litecoin is up by 2%. I assume still on the wings of its latest upgrade. Anything else crazy? Uh, Leo said Unis Leo is up by 10%. Tron is up by 1%. Ethereum Classic is up by 7.5%. Tezos is up by 5 Elrond Eagle is up by 24 And everything else looks like it's trying to move back up, but uh, watch out for the gigantic magnet in the sky. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that... Oh, the sun's coming out. Look at that. I do hope that you all are having a... Gr wow, geez. Whoa, okay. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, supporting. Um, and yeah, I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.